this is just a quick video showing you how I use buttons with icons and still give that perception that the button is being pressed. So let me show you the problem I face by adding a button to the canvas. By default, the button control has a pressed and a hover value. So if I hover over it, it changes colour, it gets darker and I press it, it gets lighter. And that's quite nice. I don't normally keep text on my buttons, I like to use icons to make things a bit more visual. And I actually like to sometimes use more than one icon. This is just an example of a button that may represent adding a new note. We can see that when we hover over that now, we kind of get mixed results. The icon changes colour, or well one of the icons does, the other one doesn't, and the button doesn't change colour at all. And that's because we've got three layers of components there, all taking up the same space. And the same would happen if I press this, I get mixed results. I can't even press the, the plus icon at all, because that's underneath the note icon. And so how do I get around that? I want those that group of components to act as one component, and I also want to get that hover and pressed effect back. First, I'll just change the colours to make them a bit more on brand. And you still get that odd effect, you actually don't get much effect at all there. But for the solution, I take a copy of my main button and I paste it over the top of all the controls. So now that, that so now that's one button on top of the other. So when I hover over that I only get the effect of that top button. I haven't changed. Then what I do, I'll amend the fill property of the top button and I'll change the alpha value to zero. The alpha value represents transparency and it's a number between one and zero, one being fully visible and zero being fully transparent. So now we can see the controls below. And if we preview, because there's no transparency on the hover value, we can't see them anymore, it obscures the other controls. So let's copy the, the value that we just added for the, the fill. And use it to populate the hover fill property. And because we don't want that fully transparent, because then we'll not have any sort of hover effect, we'll just add 0 0.25. And let's see what we get. So you can see we get some sort of hover effect. The button darkens. Then all we need to do is amend the pressed fill And we'll just do the exact same again, except we'll make that even less transparent now and put it up to 0 0.5. And it's worth experimenting with the val different values for that alpha value. And if we now preview our app, we get a hover and then it goes darker again when we press it. And we'll preview it again and that's essentially one control there that you're pressing. But it's just making the other controls look like the same control. And just to tidy things up, I would group them together and name it accordingly. It's worth playing around with the different colours to see what effect suits you most. I find that better, but you might want the, the button to go lighter or the icons to 
to go brighter as you press them. And you don't have to just do that with buttons, you can also do it with shapes and images to make some really cool custom buttons. And I'll show you some examples. And here's one an app I'm working on where it gets lighter and then darker when pressed. And you can use these buttons, the same effect in galleries. And we've got even some, some custom images in there with shadows. This is just something I'm working on at the moment. And I'll make another video in due course showing you how to make those custom icons. So I hope that demonstrates how you can use buttons with icons and still get quite cool effects out of them. And then also to, to get that, that component behaving as one control, one button, as opposed to multiple on separate on different layers. Until next time, blue skies.